Arsenal Football Club. As things currently stand, Arsenal haven't had, you know, the greatest start to the season. And the fact is that Arsenal currently sit closer to the relegation zone than the league leaders Liverpool. So with us being nowhere near where we should be, there comes a lot of pressure. And that pressure is mainly aimed at one man in particular, our manager, our first team coach, Unai Emery. So much so that I personally believe at this current moment of time, a majority of Arsenal fans wanted to go. Over to you, Claude. It's time to go! So, whether it's down to his lack of tactical ability, his awful, awful post-match excuses, or even the fact that he mentions his two words good evening in every single bloody sentence, Unai Emery does not seem to be the man for the Arsenal job. So, that leads us on to one very simple question. Who will be the next Arsenal manager and replace Unai Emery? Oh, Let's find out. Mother. In this video, I want to make it clear right now, this is a potential Arsenal managers. It's a mix of my opinion, people I want, and also people that I don't want, but I could still see managing Arsenal. So, you know, if I do sound like I'm contradicting myself from my last video, you know, just please excuse me. Yo, what is going on guys, my name is Basil, and you know, welcome back to my channel. Yeah, again, in this video, we are talking Arsenal's management issues right now, and in this video, like I said in my last video, we're going to talk about potential replacements for Unai Emery. Obviously, though, at our current time of filming, Unai Emery's not been sacked and he's still in the Arsenal job. It looks like after the Leicester game, if we lose that, which we probably will, his time at Arsenal could be finito. So today, we are going to look into five potential replacements for Unai Emery, and people that could lead Arsenal, you know, back to the good old days, the days of the Vintimor, you know, back to the mighty Arsenal. But before we do get into that i would mostly appreciate it. if you man can go down there smash the like button let's try and hit the 100 likes mark i've asked my last two videos and we haven't quite got there so can we please finally hit the 100 like mark i would massively appreciate it also if you could please subscribe to the channel as well it'd be much appreciated we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers and we're getting there slowly but surely and i want to get there as soon as possible so if you do enjoy my content and you like me as a person or hate me as a person just feel free to subscribe because you know it's free and it would massively massively be appreciated also, make sure to go down in the comments and continue the discussion of the Arsenal manager. Who do you want to see as the next Arsenal manager? And the managers that name in this video, would you take them? Is there other people you want to see? If you agree or even disagree with what I say in the video, make sure to go down there and comment. And yeah, let's just continue the discussion of Arsenal and their next potential manager. So with that being said, let's get straight into this. Here are our five potential managers that could potentially replace Unai Emery as Arsenal manager. Keyword being potentially. It's the mix of my opinion, people that I think could join Arsenal, and people that are getting linked to Arsenal. So again, not all the options are people that I want to see at Arsenal. Okay, Bavs, stop waffling and get into it. Five. Oh, God. Jose Mourinho. I can't believe I'm saying this. I don't want him as Arsenal manager. And if you go back and watch my last video, I give you a 11-minute explanation to why I don't want to see him as Arsenal manager. And, you know, life comes at you fast because now in my next video, I'm talking about him potentially replacing Unai Emery and me still not wanting it. Now, as I said a few seconds ago, these are realistic targets that I think we can get and are people that we get linked to and all that stuff. So Mourinho is a person who we are getting heavily right now and I think he's one of the favourites to replace Unai Emery as Arsenal manager. So we're going to have to talk about Jose. Even though I want him nowhere near my club. Jose, we gotta have a word, lad. Jose Mourinho currently is working at Sky Sports, but as a manager, he's without a job since getting sacked last December by Manchester United. In his first year of United, he finished sixth, but still won the Europa League, got him in Champions League football, and won the Carabao Cup. Second season, they finished second behind Man City. As much as United fans would love to say they were part of that title race, that title race was over by the time December came around, so again, but he got them second. But obviously, I'm not looking at Jose as just his United career. I'm looking at Jose at Chelsea, where he won a league title and then got sacked. Won the title again at Chelsea, and then got sacked again. He's won Champions Leagues at Inter Milan and at Porto. He was also at Real Madrid for a period of time, and he won a league title where he conquered Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. So the man has definitely got the pedigree to be Arsenal manager. Whether he is the man to be the Arsenal manager, it's a bit debatable. Now, when I look at Mourinho right now, I'm not looking at Mourinho of 2005 and 6 and 7 and 8. A manager that was obviously great back then, but is he that same man right now? Comment below, do you think Jose Mourinho is still the same manager in 2019? Or is this time at the elite level of European football come to an end? Now, one of the key factors why Jose Mourinho has been linked to Arsenal is him and his agent, George Mendes. Now, Mendes is the man that has done bits for Arsenal so far. He got us Nicolas Bloodcut Pepe, and he seems to be very good friends 
with uh, Raul Sanlehi. Rich football agent friends. So that link with Mitten Mendes and Don Raul Sanlehi, it's a key factor to why Mourinho could eventually join Arsenal. It's obviously a personal fault, but I personally believe Jordan Mendes is already in the ears of Sanlehi saying, oh, look how bad Arsenal are playing under Emery. Mourinho is available. This guy's won Champions League, he's won league titles, all that stuff. He knows the league and all that stuff. So I can already tell you right now that I think Jordan Mendes is in the ears of Don Raul Sanlehi. So Don, I've got one pair of advice for you. Go to your Apple show and buy the new AirPods. Uh, this is not a paid promotion, but you know, they're noise cancelling, so just turn the noise cancellation on and get on with life. And sign the centre-back as well. Mourinho being seen in the Arsenal box of Raul Zalehi is a massive thing, and I think things are being said right now. And Mendes is trying to make this a thing. It could easily happen. Obviously, in terms of as a manager, he's got a great ratio. I think even as worse, he's never had less than 58% win ratio. Now, as much as I hate to say it, that is absolute class. He's a man that's obviously very focused on tactics, and as you can see at United, and at Chelsea, at Madrid, at Porto, at Inter Milan, he's very focused on tactics. The man won a Champions League with Inter Milan with 30% or 20% possession in the final. It's all about the tactics, making most of what you've got. Would also right now, would he be able to do the same with the current squad? You never know. But obviously, I see that he is levels and levels and levels above Unai Emery. In fact, even Scully and Claude are higher than Unai Emery right now. But with that being said, comment below your thoughts on Jose Mourinho. Would you take him at Arsenal? Me, personally, despite his ratios and his Champions League wins and all that stuff, I don't want it. But again, that's my opinion. So, if it happens, oh, it just happens. Don, you know, AirPods, just buy them, please. I'll, but I'll give you these ones. On to number four, Massimiliano Allegri. Now, Allegri is a manager that if you guys witnessed my last video about the next Arsenal manager back in 2017, when we were looking to replace Arsene Wenger, Allegri was on that list and he was number one. Fast forward to 2019 and Allegri is still on this list. He's still a manager that I massively appreciate and I think could really take the Arsenal forwards. In terms of his current situation, he left Juventus this summer, he's without a job and I've heard that he wants to take a sabbatical, which is a break from football. But like Jose Mourinho, he's currently available. So if Arsenal really wanted to, they could start negotiating right now, then wouldn't have to pay the compensation fee to the club. He's available, he can start negotiating and you can make a manager as of right now. In terms of what he did at Juventus, he got them to a Champions League final. He won four consecutive Serie A titles. Now that is one thing that people obviously look at and they go, well, anyone can do that. But then one thing that people don't remember is he actually won a league title when he was at AC Milan. And Milan have won a league title since then. So obviously it was quite an achievement to win Milan back then. His win ratio at Milan was 51% and at Juventus it was 71%. So, you know, he's a he's a proven winner. In terms of his tactics, he's a very versatile manager. He's not scared to change it in-game. And in fact, a lot of times in Juventus, he changed in-game. He'd go from three to back to four to back. You just have to go back to the infamous game between Tottenham and Juventus in the Champions league and how he changed at half time brought on man like Lichstein of all people changed the forward back and you know the rest is the history of the Tottenham so tactically this guy is obviously top top level this goes so far as Patrice Evra a few weeks ago on Man Night Football putting him near about on par with Alex Ferguson when it comes to tactical ability now it's Alex no joke you know so to round up this point in terms of the key factors the fact that he's available right now they will instantly earn the respect of the players and the fans because he's a top name he's a big name and with respect, the fans will back him and he's a manager that everyone will know about. All I'm going to say is the plug AFC if you're watching, get on your phone. I want to know if Maximiliano Regri is currently house hunting in the UK. We are very, very close to sorting out an agreement for Massimiliano Allegri. And they're also looking for, they also are, they are now also house hunting for him with his family, with his children. Obviously, plug, I'm just joking, so uh, please don't hurt me, don't do no spells on me. Expelliarmus, on to the next point. Three, Mikel Arteta. Actually, hold it right there. Since the film in this video, there has been a few more names and a brand new favorite to replace Unai Emery. So as much as I love Mikel Arteta and I would love him to take over, we simply cannot ignore this. So with that being said, three, Luis Enrique. Yes, I'm filming this clip of the video a few days later. I've been working so hard and look how red my eyes gone. Yeah, so please do like and subscribe. Now, the main reason for me taking out Arteta and putting Enrique in number three is because of how strong the reports have been and the sources that reported this. These are reports that have come out saying that Enrique was the main manager that Raul and Leahy wanted prior to appointing Unai Emery. And the fact alone that he's been out of a job since June and the fact that he's available right now makes me think that this could really truly happen. And so that's why I've put Mikel to a side and said, no, just wait there for a second and I'm going to talk about Enrique instead. In terms of Luis Enrique right now, he's without a job, as I have said, since leaving the Spain national team in June due to personal reasons those personal reasons ended up being the fact that his nine-year-old daughter was going through bone cancer and god bless her soul in late august she did pass away unfortunately so yeah rest in peace that alone could be a massive factor to why enrique actually might want to not come into football straight away such a massive thing happening in personal life do you really want to just come into football only a few months later i doubt it in terms of luis enrique as a manager he's managed both barcelona and the spain national team and at both teams he had over 70 percent win ratio which is absolutely sublime 
albeit at Spain, he was only there for six or seven games. So, But at Barca, though, he did win the treble in his first year, eclipsing what Pep Guardiola did. So having won the Champions League, La Liga and Copa del Rey, that is a massive achievement. And now one of the main reasons why I want Enrique Arthur is because of his use of Barcelona's front three. He made that special front three, Messi, Neymar and Suarez, and had them flowing to the highest of levels. They came to Arsenal, ripped us apart. They took many teams apart and they took them to the Champions League final and ripped the final apart. MSN became a thing because of Luis Enrique's management of them. Now, funny enough, at Arsenal, we have a very similar situation. We've got Nicolas Pepe, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Alexandre Lacazette. Three front players that have the makings of a fantastic front three. And at the moment, let's not hide the fact that Unai Emery is absolutely failing at getting the best out of this front three. And in fact, we've only seen him two or three times, which is absolutely shocking. Now, I know Lacazette was injured, so that played a part. But since he's been back, Pepe, Lacazette and Aubameyang, we've seen him one game which is not good enough. And even when he plays the front three, he doesn't get the best out of them. He's got the two wingers that are Aubameyang and Pepe out wide, when really and truly to get the best out of them, they're forwards, they need to be inside forwards, cutting inside and getting closer to the goal. So I think you go back to Enrique's use of MSM and where he made that attack so good, maybe it's something he could do with Arsenal's attack. So if that feels like the fact he's currently without a job, we've apparently wanted him before Unai Emery, and potentially him getting the best out of our front three, which I need to see, but I need to see that with my own eyes. This is the effect of watching every ball. But yeah, I do feel like this is a massive possibility. Maybe not now because of what happened in the past and personal reasons and that but maybe the end of the season this could be a thing and when i'm available this guy's a top manager and i would definitely definitely take it Luis enrique is an option so comment below would you take Luis enrique at arsenal Babs, back to you mate right then on to number two we are moving on to Julian Nagelsmann. now as i've said already in the list i made in 2017 allegri was on that a man that was also on that was man like Julian Nagelsmann. So I don't want to see no comments about me not knowing anything about Julian Nagelsmann. I've been talking about this guy for a time now. Now, the reason why Nagelsmann is only at number two and he could have easily been number one, I think is because the fact that he's just joined his new team in RB Leipzig only in this summer. So basically what I'm trying to say, he's the most unlikely of what we can get. But it's the reason why he's number two. In terms of trophies wise, he's won no trophies. But dare I say, the man is only 32. He is the youngest manager on the list by a country mile. The man's younger than David Luiz and he still plays for Arsenal. He managed Hoffenheim for a few years and now he's moving on to RB Leipzig. And with all due respect, both clubs aren't the biggest of clubs. So to have a 60% ratio already at RB Leipzig and a 40% win ratio at Hoffenheim is pretty respectable for me. But it's more about his focus on innovative tactics. Nicknamed the Baby Mourinho, which is mad because I don't want Mourinho, but I want Nagels, man. But yeah. Nagel's one is very focused on tactics. So far so that he's installed a massive art screen, a cinema screen on the training line just to focus on tactics. Which is actually pretty similar to Unai Emery, but obviously Nagel's one can speak and he's actually got tactics and not just uh, Aubameyang and uh, Inshallah, please work out. With quotes like only 30% of football is tactics, one thing that really attracted Julian Nagelsmann is the fact that he's very focused on pressing. You look at the way Liverpool play, I envy that so much. They're constantly pressing teams and they're winning the ball back and it's just exciting to watch. And that's one thing Nagelsmann wants to do with his teams. He did that at Hoffenheim for a few years and now he's doing it at RB Leipzig. So far so that I think they won the last game 7-0. I mean, I'd say Arsenal could win 7-0, but we'd probably go 7 goals up and then start to lose 10-7. A key factor about Julius Nagelsmann is he's always favoured the 3 in the back formation, and he's used that and he's become pretty successful under him. And I think that one of the key factors of him is he's not scared. He's gone against Bayern and he's played his way. He's gone against the top teams in Germany and played his way. He's gone to the Champions League now and he's playing his way. He isn't scared. Unai Emery for me is a scared manager. He's a very scared manager and he's scared to play his way. And even if he plays his way, it's pretty boring to watch. Nagelsmann for me is one of those managers that does not get scared. But with that being said, having just signed for Leipzig this summer, it is highly unlikely that um, we can get Nagelsmann. Because, I mean, the man's not going to want to leave his team midway through the season. But, you know, with Don Raul, you just never know. Comment below, would you take Junior Zagosman? Now, on to number one. Who is the manager that I really, really want and who I really think we can get to replace Unai Emery? Drumroll, please. What? Eric Ten Hag. Now, this is not a shock to anyone that follows me on Twitter. I love Arteta, I love Nagelsmann, but the one man I keep on saying is Eric Ten Hag. Now, if you're going to talk about recent results, he went up against Chelsea recently at Stamford Bridge and they drew 4-4. What's absolutely mad about that game, though, is that they were down to nine men. And even with nine men, they played better football than Arsenal Football Club. I'm going to cry in a minute. And I mean, also the fact that they went 4-1 up and somehow drew the game 4-4. It's so Arsenal. He's already looking at the man for the job. 
Ten Hag for me is one of my absolute wants in life, along with a six pack and, you know, a decent beard and a decent voice. Why is life so hard sometimes? In terms of Ten Hag, his style of football is one of the key attractions to me. He plays the Ajax way. What I mean by that is players that can play in every single position. You can see a right back playing a right wing, you'll see your centre back playing a striker, and it doesn't affect the team. They're all good at what they do. And you look at what he's done at Ajax, he's not spent a massive amount of money, but that team plays good football and that's down to good, good structural tactics going forwards and it's, and it's a way of playing and it's a beautiful, beautiful way of playing. And what I'm saying is I would absolutely love the Ajax player to be the Arsenal way. Enough of this mid-table mentality. We need actual good football again. We became known for playing beautiful football and now we're known for being absolute bottlers and also very boring. The amount of times I've been Emirates this season and nearly fell asleep. It's actually getting to a joke now. In terms of his win ratio, Ajax is 71% so far. And one thing that people don't quite know is that he won Ajax their first league title since 2014. So basically what I'm saying, he's come to Ajax and he's revolutionised that team, re-energised that team and made that team good again. Getting to the Champions League semis when they should have really been the final if it wasn't for bloody Lucas Moura coming out of the performance of his life. That is a massive achievement with Ajax. Now getting to the semis is a great thing, but the way they got there is what I really became intrigued with. It's the lack of fit. But this team, they don't seem scared to play their way. And even with nine men, you expect your team to drop off and become scared. And when if Arsenal, and if Arsenal ever went down to ten men, I know we'd continue to go seven goals. But they seemed like they knew what they were doing. They knew what to do. They had tactics in mind and they played to that tactics. And they didn't seem phased. And that lack of fit is what I would love to see at Arsenal. A manager that could go to big teams like Man City and play his way. That could go to Liverpool and play his way. And hopefully win his way. Now you look at Emery and he's a complete opposite to that. He's so scared to play his way. He's always adapting to the opponent which obviously can win you some games but at the same time when you're adapting to Sheffield United away it's never going to be the best of things is it now and it's definitely not what Arsenal Football Club should be doing the fact that Ten Hag's gone to Bayern and played his way and won his way he went to Real Madrid the Bernabeu played his way and won his way and he got to the Champions League semi-finals playing his way and winning his way and then eventually losing not his way to Tottenham which isn't the best but still yeah, he got to the semis. I just feel like this man is what we need. He's the next big coach. He's young. He's revolutionary. He's innovative. Lack of fear. I think he's exactly what Arsenal need right now. By saying that with Bayern Munich having sacked manager Nico Kovac, Ten Hag has become automatic favourite for that job. Because if people don't know, he used to manage Bayern's B team a few years ago. Which is not really what I want to hear, but you know, you got to live with it. But you know what? No. Yeah. Bayern came to us from PS5-1. We went to Bayern and we got batted 5-1. It's time for revenge, Raul. So a message to Don Raul and Lee, even though you're definitely not watching this video because why are you watching my videos? If you are, please like and subscribe. I need you to go up there and make this happen. Show Bayern Munich who the real club is, the real big club is. Show them who the real Don is and get the revenge for us football club. Eric Ten Hag, 2020. Let's make this a thing. Lads, welcome to redemption seas. But with that being said, guys, that is it. I'm going to end the video there and there. I've spoken a lot in this video. I never speak this much. And if you did enjoy me speaking this much, please go down there, smash a like on the video. Again, I would massively appreciate 100 likes. Again, if you also appreciate my content, make sure to go down there and subscribe to my channel. If you're new, I'm on the road to 10,000 subscribers, so it'd be massively appreciated. Also, let's continue the conversation about the next Arsenal managers. Comment below the managers that you want to see take over at Arsenal, your choices, your personal favourites, and also why you want them to take over Arsenal. And with that being said, you know your boy is starting slowly to become consistent again so appreciate the love you man are showing to me the next manager for arsenal i don't know who's gonna be but whatever it is and whoever it's gonna be i know for a fact it can't get any worse than when i have been. i hope i have a news today anyways i'll chat to you guys later